Hey guys, Rev from Into Gaming. I'm gonna do a quick video trying to explain how loot spawning works in PUBG. Um, at least this is the way I believe it's working. It's uh, a lot better approach than the begin play spawn everything method that some think it is happening. It happens on certain games, but on a game where you're gonna spawn thousands of items or pick up items like loot you're you're not going to be able to do that because it's just going to eat up too much memory and I'm going to explain that real quick um, when you spawn an item your you the client are not spawning it uh, all items that are spawned in a multiplayer game are spawned on the server simulation and then the server replicates that information over to you so that you can see it and your client can actually render it. Um, so that's technically how it works with multiplayer gaming. Now, every item that's spawned by the server has to be stored in server's memory. So if you spawn a thousand items on a server, the server is storing a thousand items worth of information in memory. Now with a collision-based system, you're only spawning an item when there's a collision. So as a player in this reference passes through the collision radius then an item is spawned on the server. And that's one item versus in this simulation four. And uh, let me just get over here and show that to you real quick. I'm going to turn on collisions. I pass through a collision and items spawn. No other items are spawned. The collision radius for those items are still there. The collision radius for the item that I spawned has been destroyed. The actual spawn actor has been destroyed. This limits how many items can be spawned in this iteration. So for example, if two players collide with a collision radius at the same time, depending on their pings, or I should just, just go with it blank. If two players collide with a collision radius, it's only going to spawn one item. You know over here and explain that aspect of it so when my 300 ping buddy here hits that collision radius the item is spawned do that again and I'm gonna send him over he's gonna hit it boom I see the information immediately that's replication in play because I'm in network calling distance of that item the server says hey that item is relevant let's send it to rev because he's close enough to get the information. At across the map, I wouldn't get that information because it's not relevant to me. Only players near that item, within a set distance of that item, are going to get the replication information. Now, pings come into this pretty straightforwardly. Um, it, it should make sense. So, if this guy's got a 300 millisecond ping and he and there's he trips the spawn, he triggers the spawning of an item, then it's going to take a certain amount of time for his movement that for his movement that made the collision to reach the server. This spawning is done on the server, so collisions have to be triggered on the server. So as he comes in and makes this collision, collided there, He's got a 300 millisecond ping. It's going to take 150 milliseconds for the packet that made him collide, the forward movement that made him collide with that collision radius to reach the server. So there's going to be a delay there. So he collides. 150 milliseconds later, that collision movement packet is actually going to hit the server. The server is going to move the player. It's going to notice the collision, and then it's going to spawn the item. Spawning of an item is in microseconds, literally microseconds, not milliseconds, microseconds. So the item is spawned, and then it's going to send that information to him saying, hey, you're close enough, so here's the information for that item. That, again, is going to take that player another 150 milliseconds to reach him. Now, because I'm a, oh, I'm in radius. Let me back out of that. Uh, because I have a... 30 millisecond ping in this scenario upon 
the server receiving his collision information to trigger the spawning, it's only going to take at that point 15 milliseconds for it to reach me. Now, in this situation, if I trip it, it only takes 15 milliseconds for that packet that pushed me across that threshold to reach the server because I have a low ping. I'm closer to the physical location of the server itself, so low ping, 15 milliseconds to get the server, one millisecond, just ballparking it there, it's microseconds for it to spawn the item and another 15 to get it back, get me the replication. So as of my movement that would make that collision so I can actually replicate that information, I got the packet for replication, is only 30, 30.2 milliseconds. It's a very low number because I have a low ping. Um, and as I said before, the collision radiuses are destroyed on collision on the server. So if we both hit that collision radius at the same exact time, and it really doesn't matter at that high ping, um, my collision interaction is going to reach the server sooner than the, th the 300 millisecond player's interaction is going to. So to keep the server from spawning another item there, I delete the collision or and the actor itself. So um, that's the base principle on that stuff. Now you notice that after a few seconds the actual collision radius shrinks and that is the early game aspect of it. We're going to increase the collision radiuses because players are moving at highs of velocities. We also want to get the item spawned sooner so by the time they get down to the ground and and start looking for stuff, it's it's actually the information is there on their client so they can render it. One problem that you're going to run into with this with with high pings especially is priority. Priority of data. Pawns have a 3.0 priority with network calling and loot items are going to generally be kind of low, like a 1.0, maybe even up to a 2.0 uh, priority. And what that means in the sense of replication is player data is going to supersede loot data as far as when the server is going to send it to you. So if I had 25 players here near me that I needed information about so I could render them out moving on screen, the server is going to send me those player information before it will send me loot information. So in the reality of things, you have to look at the uh, game's max packet size. So all games have one. Uh, say for example, this game for PUBG has a, just an example, say it has a 512 kilobit packet size or payload size. Uh, that means that the server can only put 512 kilobits of data in that packet. If it puts more, it's going to fragment. And fragment equals loss. So you don't put, you only put what you can in it. Consider a packet a box. And you can only fill that box so much. So if there's 25 players worth of information I have to put in that box, that's going to get filled up before I even think about throwing loot information in. So say there's not enough uh, room for the loot information, well it's got to wait for the next tick or next replication frequency. So you're going to get the player information before you'll ever get loot information. Now if you are around maybe one player, that's not a whole lot of data. So you'll get player data and loot data all in one packet or potentially could. Now somebody's going to say, hey, just increase the packet size. Well, when you increase packet payload size and the max size of that, you're also increasing the chances of fragmentation, which is packet loss. So if I took that 512 and said, no, it's not big enough, let's jump it up to 1024, well, I just doubled the chances of that packet being lost. The more data you put in a packet, the higher its chances of fragmentation. That's networking 101. So to reduce 
the chances of packet loss in real time you're using UDP as a protocol you want to keep your packets small as possible small as possible you might increase the send rate so that you're sending more packets per second which would be your replication rate increase the replication rate so you're sending more packets uh, per second versus increasing the packet size overall and staying at the, the current replication rate um, so hopefully that makes some sense to you guys where you're landing you're hot dropping in somewhere and you got 15 other players there you land on a roof you're looking around you don't see anything you come back a few seconds later and the roof is littered with data I mean littered with uh, loot items well that's replication at play and that's also your latency at play replication and priority stipulate what you're going to get in a packet um, a quick example of that would be if I'm way over here if I'm way over here the replication rate for that player over there is not going to be that high I mean it's going to be high enough where I can see movement but it's not going to be its max rate now the close you are to a player the more updates you get about them per second so at a far distance say the max rate is uh, max rate for network calling on this particular player is 60 Hertz meaning 60 updates a second that's the max frequency I would only get that when I'm really close to them, up to a certain set range and you can scale that with code to stipulate what range you want to do that with um, but out at you know 100 meters 200 meters we're gonna cut it in half so I would only get an update at 30 Hertz or 30 times a second one every other tick um, that would be the case with uh, some of these replication changes that uh, PUBG's doing replication rate changes I should say but there's a whole lot that goes into the network calling your distance between the player generates its relevancy and then you have to look at priority and I want to put high priority stuff in packets going outbound sooner than later so priority supersedes so hopefully that makes sense to you so collisions player collides it spawns the item on the server the server replicates that information over to you and how long it takes you to get that information so that you can actually render it is is you're dealing with the replication rate of player pawns how many player pawns are nearby the packet max packet size bandwidth uh, saturation line saturation and so forth so I can't flood the line with a bunch of packets for Joe Schmo because that just clogs up the network and there's a higher chance of uh, fragmentation and so forth but um, one last little thing that I want to note that's been mentioned but it, it's just not clear to people is render calling totally different from network calling render calling you can see right here is I can see the item I pull away from it and it disappears it's not there anymore I'm in close it's there back away it's not so that's a, a another radius that you're dealing with when rendering uh, actors and pretty much every actor in a game has a render distance uh, it gets so small to a point where it's one pixel of the screen there's no point in actually rendering it um, and trying to you know it, it just increases your FPS if you call some of these things out uh, you can see this in in PUBG when you you parachute in uh, trees aren't rendered until you get close enough to them and then you actually start at the lowest level of detail which is a billboard style which is a 2d basically a 2d sprite you can think of cardboard cut out of it um, that's always facing your direction and the closer you get to that item to the tree itself that the level of detail increases um, until you're real close then you're up at the maximum uh, level of detail lot zero um, anyway 
hope this explains this stuff to you guys.